I remember um, Swami Satchidananda, who was a wonderful great Indian teacher who was here in the West for quite a, t- quite a while, and he said, I don't teach Hinduism, I teach undoism, <laughs> which is part of what you are describing, that we have all these condition, conditioning that we have, and you take it in. We're going to work a lot with the judging mind, actually. But the first step is simply to notice it. So here you are and you say, I don't want to judge. I don't like judgment. Judgment is bad. I should not have so much damn judgment. <laughs> it's awful, right? Help me get rid of this judgment. But what All is that? It. That's just more judgment, right? Yes. So then you kind of double it up. There is an alternative, and we are going to practice with it quite a lot, because it's what you raise is such an important and valuable question. What helps is to acknowledge the judging mind. There are other techniques that we'll add to it. And to be able to name it and say, oh, judging mind, thank you for your opinion, right? Because it's full of opinions of how you should be and how you weren't. Thank you. You even know who programmed it in there. We won't talk about them, but you know that. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you for trying to protect me. Thank you for trying to keep me safe and make me a better human being or whatever. You have to have a little humor about it, right? You can even put a costume on the judging mind and say, all right, if you were to draw a cartoon figure or, or make somebody, you know, or someone into the figure of the judging mind, you could do that too. Because you see them. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you for trying to help me. I'm okay, actually. And in this process of a presence in general, of being, of being really mindfully and, and lovingly present, amidst this onslaught of all of our emotions and, and emotional experiences, the missing ingredient, actually the missing ingredient that is almost always there, is this quality of self-compassion. And this is what I'm going to be speaking of today, this quality of self-compassion. So often we are either, we create this false sense of righteousness to cover our pain, or we judge ourselves with really harsh criticisms, right? Like, this shouldn't be here, this shouldn't be happening to me, I'm doing something wrong, I'm not good enough. And the idea of nurturing ourselves, of leading with self-compassion, when we're having these thoughts, it's not our usual go-to, but it can be. 